Hey class, today we're talking about the digestive system, which is pretty awesome because we use it every day. Starting with our mouth. Um, in your mouth there is saliva or spit that's made by salivary glands. And there's an enzyme called amylase that is in your saliva that starts to chemically break down your food. Your teeth chewing up your food also mechanically digest your food before it goes down your esophagus, which is basically just a tube that moves your food from your mouth to your stomach. And there's muscles that push down the food from your mouth to your stomach called peristalsis. So even if you eat upside down, your food would end up in your stomach. At the end of the esophagus, there's a sphincter, which is a muscle that keeps the food where it should be. So once it gets to that point, it's not going to go in the reverse order. There's also an epiglottis that's a flap of tissue that's going to close over your windpipe to make sure that your food goes from your stomach to your mouth. So there are two separate tubes that lead from your mouth. Your esophagus goes to your stomach. Your windpipe goes to your lungs. We'll talk about that more with the respiratory system. Next is the stomach. And there's a lovely picture of your stomach. Inside are gastric juices like hydrochloric acid and pepsin, and they are going to chemically break down those foods. It's also being mechanically digested. There are muscles in your stomach that um, turn the food and mix it around to break it into pieces. By this point, our food is called chyme, which is just a thick, creamy liquid that's continuing to be digested, and your food will stay there for about three to four hours. <clears throat> Inside your stomach, there's an inner wall that's coated by a layer of mucus. And if that mucus is not there, it might make a hole called an ulcer, which you can see in the picture. Heartburn is also caused by those gastric juices. Next is the small intestine. Um, between the stomach and the small intestine, the first 25 centimeters of your small intestine is called the duodenum. Your small intestine is 7 meters long, but it's called small because it's only 2.5 centimeters in diameter. So it's really skinny, but it's very long. Um, the main goal you're digesting your small intestine is to um, break down those nutrients and there are little finger-like projections that line your small intestine called villi and they're going to absorb those nutrients from all the food that you eat and they're going to send them to our bloodstream so that our circulatory system can carry them to the rest of our body. Next is the large intestine, also known as the colon, and basically all digestion has already taken place by the time the food gets to your large intestine, and the main um, purpose here is that the body is going to stay in balance by absorbing any excess water. If not enough is absorbed, you end up with diarrhea, but if too much is absorbed, you're going to end up constipated. The last two are your rectum and anus. The rectum is just a short tube that's going to store that semi-solid waste until your body you know, eliminates it. And then what we call feces is the undigested material in your colon. So it's made up of water and undigested food, mucus, dead cells, and bacteria. It's going to get rid of all of those things through um, that solid waste. Another important part to talk about is your appendix. Um, it was once used to digest plant parts. We no longer need it. But sometimes people end up with appendicitis where it becomes swollen and infected and it can um, actually burst and cause a lot of pain. So people will go through surgery to get the appendix removed. Some other parts that food does not go through, but there are helper organs um, like your liver. It's going to produce bile, which is going to break up fat in the foods that you eat. Your gallbladder is what stores the bile made by your liver and that's why it has that lovely little green color. And then your pancreas is going to produce um, digestive juices, which also is going to help you digest your food. So if we look at our diagram, these are the parts that you all need to know for the digestive system. So looking at the diagram, if we start with A, there are multiple salivary glands. you got your teeth and your tongue. Um, at the back is the pharynx. Those aren't parts we really need to know. We're going to focus on um, your esophagus, which is E there in the diagram your liver, your stomach, your gallbladder, your pancreas, the duodenum, your large intestine, small intestine, and rectum. So you can see the ones that are started, the ones we're going to focus on, the ones that um, will be on your quiz. And that is the lovely digestive system. Talking about all that made me hungry. Time to eat.